playing against Reggie and coaching Reggie and, and knowing his personality, Reggie's hit more shots uh, in crucial times than about anybody I've ever seen. Um, being elected to the Hall of Fame is, is the ultimate. It, it's the, uh, the icing on the cake for everyone. It's a great honor. I, I think everybody respects Reggie because he came out and played hard every night. People always talk about how Michael Jordan came out and played hard. Uh, Reggie came out and played just as hard. While Reggie Miller earned the respect of nearly everyone he played against, the reverse was not always the case. An opponent had to prove himself worthy of Reggie's admiration with sustained greatness. And that's exactly what Michael Jordan did, time and time again. Michael Jordan, what do you remember about playing him when you guys were on the floor and he was guarding you and you were guarding him and they had, I'm sure some terrific shootouts over the years between just the two of you? You know, looking back over 18 years, you'd have thought that Michael and I, the Bulls and the Pacers, would have played more than once in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. We only played once and it was that epic seven game series. You're measured by your competition. He is clearly, and in my opinion, the best basketball player I've ever seen to date. And I knew that I had to bring it each and every time I stepped on the court when I was going against MJ. Were you friends? No. Now Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller having a go at it. And I mean we get this going. Here come the benches. Bo Hill is out there. Uh -oh. Bill Jackson's going out there. There'll be fines handed out all over the place here. But more importantly, what in the world ignited this? We weren't friends. We Talk to each other on the floor? He might have been the one player I didn't talk to. Really? Yeah. Because he might have been the one player who could really embarrass you. <laughs> and he could come back at you pretty yes. good too. Could yeah, he? he could come right back at you. I wanted what he had. Him being the best, mm -hmm. the championships. So I watched, I listened, and I tried to learn a lot by playing against him. And what did you learn? What couple things you took away from what he did or how he played or how he acted? He is cut from the same mold as Magic Johnson. And when I say that, and Larry Bird, all three of those players, win by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. And they will do whatever it takes on the court to win a game. And you adopted that? I tried to adopt that, mm -hmm. yeah. You had it be textbook when you played the Bulls and you played against Michael. You know, Reg, it's interesting because I think when you think of Jordan, you think about the dunks. You were a shooter. Uh, our games were vastly yes. contrast. You know? yeah. His was more power, dunking. Mine was more shooting, finesse. But for some reason, I think my style at times irritated him because I was in constant motion. He used his power to control players and to keep them where he wanted them. He had great torque. Yes, he did. Just the way and he let me say this about Michael. Probably, if not the, one of the smartest basketball players. You mm -hmm. know, you talk about his ability to be athletic and all that, but he was a very smart basketball yeah. player. He thought the game through. Yes, yes. You thought the game and through. And he knew what your weaknesses were, mm -hmm. and he tried to exploit them. McKee gets it in the middle for the win! It's there! Four tenths of a second! Because that was another game where I felt that we had let slip away, because Michael was being Michael and dominating, along with Scotty and, and Dennis. There wasn't a lot of time left on the clock. At the time, Ron Harper was guarding me, and I knew Michael was going to switch off <laughs> when I came up top. And I said to myself, well, they're not going to call offensive foul. So when I came up, I was just so upset that we had let this game slip away from us. I basically just shoved Michael. I just pushed him out of the way, daring the officials to call offensive foul because I was so upset. And when I didn't hear the whistle, and I had so much space, and I went off to my left, and Derek threw me the basketball, and now you just go into mechanics. If I had known that I had that much space, I probably would have shot it differently and probably missed it. But I assumed he was right on my tail. So catch, release, and let it go. The rest is history. Clearly, friends or not, Reggie respected Jordan immensely. But he may not have realized how much respect others had for him. In an unheard of tribute, Pacers teammate Jermaine O'Neal illustrated the high regard in which Reggie was held. 
to set the stage, we go back to November 28, 1992, when Reggie torched the Charlotte Hornets for 57 points, setting the Pacers' single-game scoring record. It's a mark that still stands today, but there was a night when it could have been broken. On January 4, 2005, the Pacers' young center O'Neal was dominant. With just under two minutes to play, O'Neal had torched the Milwaukee Bucks for 55. But rather than carving his own name in the history books, he demonstrated the ultimate respect for his teammate, checking out of the game with a minute 43 left to preserve Reggie Miller's record. When we return, Reggie shares another magical moment with a different Pacer teammate, Jalen Rose.